This will take 12 minutes and it's five color changes. So we'll go on and select it. I've hooped up just a piece of muslin with tearaway stabilizer. And one of the things that I do is I always use the stabilizer I'm going to use for a design because it helps you with the registration. We'll set the design by choosing set. Now, I might want to put a name over the top of this. Maybe I'm making this for a little girl. If I want to do that, I choose add. And I hope, let me move my camera back a little bit to make sure all of this is in your line of sight. And we'll choose add. And I want to make this where it's small script-like letters. So I think what I'll do is I'll use this. This is small. And my granddaughter's name is Elena. So I'll choose Elena E. And we'll go to lowercase L. A, I, N, A. And when I set it, I need to move this because it's real, I really want to put it either above or below. And perhaps I want to make some other changes to it. If I go in to edit, I can go to text. And let's say I want to array this. So one of the things I can do is I can arc it. And I think that's what I'll do. I'll make a small arc and I'll choose OK and we'll choose Set. One of the things I've noticed is the characters aren't joining. I'm not real happy about that. So we'll choose OK and we'll go ahead and click off. And we're back on with the name Elena. Let's go back to Edit, go back to Text, and let's go to Spacing. Now with, with spacing, what we can do is we can decrease the spacing. So we'll decrease it a bit. And when it's touching and I'm satisfied with it, then we'll move on. Okay, that looks good. All right, we'll choose okay. And because we moved it around, what I'll do is I'll choose set. And now we'll go back and We'll select everything and we'll make sure we move it to the center. And that looks pretty good. So we'll choose OK and I'm re ready to go ahead and stitch this out. So we'll slide it in and we'll lock it down. Let me move this fabric down so you can see. And what we'll do is we'll just take this piece of stabilizer and move it underneath the hoop. So that's going, that's what is termed as floating stabilizer. One of the things that you can do is look at what the design is going to look like in the hoop. So we'll choose our hoop size, and this is what it'll look like in the hoop. Now let's choose magnify, and let's go to stitch player, and let's set it on two so it's fairly fast, and watch it play out. And we'll just speed it up by selecting three. And this is how our little, little design will stitch out. We'll choose close. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go into embroidery. When we go into embroidery, one of the things that you may need to do from time to time is you're stitching, is you may need to either advance the stitch because the thread broke, or perhaps you need to, your machine went off and you need to start at a, at a place. And normally when your machine goes off and it's been stitching, and we'll actually do this while, while we are stitching, it should come back to the, where your stitch stopped. But this is the way to look at your stitches in advance. Now you can turn the camera on as well. And we'll do that after we start stitching, but you can advance plus or minus one stitch, 10 stitches. You can go up 100 stitches and 1,000 stitches. You can also change your colors. So you can see here that I can go to, to color two, to color three, color four. Notice that it's moving up here and it's advancing through the line up to color five. Now, if I want to go back to zero, I just press zero and now I'm back at the beginning. So we'll choose okay. 
and let's go ahead and start sewing. So I'll move the camera so you can see that. I'll pause the video. Okay, when everything is ready, one of the things that we need to look at is the light right here. This light is red, so it's telling me that there's something wrong. I need to put my presser foot down to stitch. So we'll select that, press the presser foot, and notice it's green now. Let's go ahead and start. I'm going to stop it for a moment because I want you to see the screen. Okay, we're going to do something that most people would not want to do. And we're going to turn the machine off because right now we notice we're at stitch number 1271. Now, oftentimes what I would do if I stopped the machine and I went somewhere, I would write down that stitch number. And then as I became more comfortable with the machine, I knew I could turn it back on and it should start up at that number. I stopped doing that. But just remember the number 1251 and what I'll do is I'll turn off the machine. Well, it's first telling us the needle's down, so I need to raise the needle. So I'll do that. And now it's telling me to remove the embroidery frame. So that means I'll have to cut my thread. Okay, I'll choose okay. Now it's asking me, is it okay to resume the previous memory? And we'll choose okay. Now notice it said stitch 1271. Let me go ahead and put my hoop back on my machine. When I raise my needle in order to start up the machine again, and I was I had to cut my thread to remove the hoop, or I could have left it, but I would have had to cut it at some point. Now what I want to do is I want to back up a few stitches because I, I want to make sure I sew over a few of those stitches to tack them down. Now that's where I'll go over here and I'll select the plus minus key. And I usually back up about 10 stitches. So I'll choose minus 10. And if you want, we can turn on the camera so you can see it. And it tells me I need to put my presser foot down. So I'll do that. And we'll turn the camera on. And now you can see where we are right now. This is where it's going to start out. And I'm okay with that, so I'll choose close. And we'll go ahead and choose okay. Now, we're ready to start sewing again, so let me start sewing. And that's how to advance your, your machine. When you finish embroidery, you'll get a nice little happy face. Let's go ahead and take this out of the machine and here's the design. So you can see a little bit of puckering right here, but that'll go away with the iron. Part of that's because the hoop. We'll just go ahead and remove it from the hoop so you can see. Okay, here we are at the cutting table and You'll notice there's a little bit of puckering up here on the top. That will go away when we iron it. And you'll also notice that the registration is good. That's one of the first things you look at when you look at a design. Depending on how you hoop it, the type of material. I will tell you this muslin is thin. Typically what I do is I'll buy muslin or something like a Bella Solid. By Moda and I use it just to stitch out samples. The Bella is a nicer fabric than this muslin. It's very inexpensive and it has a loose weave. So when you use it, you're going to have some deg degree of puckering. 
if I wanted to eliminate puckering, I could have ironed on a stabilizer on the back of this and I wouldn't have had any puckering. But this is a sample and it was really just to show you how, how it stitches out. Now let's turn it over to the back and whenever I'm tearing something away, I'll hold on the embroidery design and I'll start tearing. And you'll notice that I'm holding those stitches and supporting them as I'm tearing it. Thanks for your time today. And if you have any questions, please post them on the Facebook group or in our YouTube group. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.